Questions from the homework number seven? I would love to. Okay. I said this. Um, the amount of electric energy we said yesterday was power times time. And since they want to how long, I said I'm kind of leaning towards time being however much energy it takes divided by uh, however much power we supply. Is that okay, Sally? This is maybe not the question to do right before lunch, but that's okay. Mm, hot dogs. I'm still a kid enough. I love hot dogs. Oh. Uh, 10,000 joules, 10 kilojoules. Apparently, we need that much energy divided by... Now, power is measured in watts. I said, I don't have any watts here. However, they did tell me that the resistance is... 30 ohms and the hot dog is connected to 120 volts so I said I can certainly go V equals I times R I can tell you how much current is flowing through this hot dog the amount of current that's flowing through this hot dog is going to be 120 divided by 30 I said oh we got four amps flowing through this hot dog I didn't quite know what I was going to do with that but I figured, Regan, let me find something. Ah, oh, wait a minute. I said, aha. We also said yesterday that power was, right? So down here, instead of power, I'm going to put, do I know the voltage that this hot dog is wired into? 120. Did I just figure out the current? Oh, that's why they told me the resistance. Did I just figure out the current? Yep, four amps. So it's going to be 10,000 divided by 120 times 4. And I think that should work. It's going to be 10,000 divided by, I think 480 is 120 times 4. And by the way, that's how many watts of power I guess we're using to cook this hot dog is 480 watts of power. Good, yes, that's 20.8, yeah? Okay. Nice little question in terms of it reminds you, don't forget to kind of plug and chug and use the two equations to find missing stuff. But I'll be honest, most of what I've assigned so far is not what I'm going to be primarily asking you. In fact, today is the meat and potatoes. So with that, let's move on to today's lesson. Continue. So the laws for analyzing circuits. Kirchhoff was a Russian physicist, and he wrote very nice mathematical rules for analyzing circuits and I learned them mathematically and the way I taught it my first couple of years when I taught physics 12 was mathematically and I'll be honest I almost prefer that because I'm a math nerd it involves systems of equations oh it was lovely and then I think I told you I talked to a physics teacher who gave me a better analogy this idea of a ski hill so I'm going to use that because it's much clearer for those of you who are not math nerds and even the math nerds like it so the first law we're going to learn is Kirchhoff's current law. And the author abbreviates this as key KCL, and it's basically a conservation of charge. Here's what it says. Kirchhoff's current law states that at a junction between wires, if you come to, in a circuit diagram, a fork, a junction, the current flow splits or combines and it continues to flow downhill. So we're always going to ask ourselves, where's the battery? Where's the top of the battery? And the current is always going to flow downhill from there. When the current splits or combines, no charge is lost so that the total flow into the junction equals the total flow out of the junction. Well, here's what we're going to say. The sum of all of the currents into a junction has to equal the sum of all the currents out of a junction. What we're saying is electrons and protons can't magically vanish. In our ski hill analogy, the skiers can't leave the hill without getting to the bottom and walking off. If you have two amps coming this way and one amp coming this way, do you know how many amps you have leaving? Three. So let's use that to analyze the current. It says, find the unknown currents 
So here is our circuit diagram. Here is the top of the battery, the uphill. So the current is flowing this way. How many amps are in this wire? 1.75. That's our total current. How do I know it's our total current? Because that's what left the chairlift. It may get split up along the way, but when they join back together, you know what our total current's always going to be? 1.75. So here, how many amps are flowing through there? Have there been any other paths for the skiers to travel on? Then it's 1.75 amps. What about here? Have there been any other paths for our skiers to travel on? then it's 1.75 amps. And in fact, when they get me to analyze a circuit, one of the first things I try and find, if I can find total current, inevitably the question falls apart. Next one. Here's our battery. I usually start at the top of the chairlift, at the top of the battery. What's my total current in this circuit? Three. If 0.8 amps go this way, how many amps go this way? 2.2. Follow them, follow them, follow them, follow them, follow them, follow them, follow them. When I get right here, what's the current? Still 2.2. And what's the direction? That way. Downhill. I had 0.8 amps going this way. 2.2 amps going this way. When they meet again, what's my current? And that is going to be my total current because they all meet at the bottom of the chairlift. 3 amps, what's the direction? That way. That's Kirchhoff's law for current. It's basically a conservation of charge. Dylan, it says, you can't lose electrons along the way. Except instead of the electrons, because that's such a small unit of measure, we'll use uh, amps and current. Example two it says, show the direction of each current and find the unknown currents. Okay. Right here, the current would be traveling that way off of my chairlift. That's downhill. So as I follow through here, if I go through this resistor, which way is this current, up or down? It's got to get back to the bottom of the chairlift. It must be traveling this way in this resistor. As I travel, let's look down this junction here. Which way is the current flowing here, to the left or to the right? If I follow from my chairlift, from my battery, which way must it be flowing over here? To the right. And you know what? How many amps right here? Five. How many amps right here? How many skiers did we start out with then? Does that make sense, Connor? Oh, which way is the current flowing through this resistor, up or down? Down. So if 2 amps went here, and I have 5 amps coming in, how many amps right here? Must have broken up into 3 amps, and it must be flowing this way, and down. And let's keep walking, let's keep walking. Oh, how many amps must there be right here? Must be 3 and they join together. How many amps must there be right here? Five to the left. Oh, and how many amps must there be right here? Thirteen. The amount of current flowing into a junction has to equal the amount of current eventually flowing out of the junction. Electrons are neither created nor destroyed. Oh, by the way, this is the direction of the current. Which way is the direction of the electron flow? In the opposite. But we said we're going to talk about positive current because it allows us to use this downhill analogy and it makes more sense. So current up, electrons down. Current left, electrons right. Next one. Okay, this one's a bit trickier here. <coughs> I'll start out by adding some directions. So here's my battery. Which is the positive side, the left side or the right side? Right side, so the current is flowing this way. 
Which way is it flowing in all three of these resistors? Upwards or downwards? Upwards, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to go like that. Which way is it flowing right here? Left. Ah, and this is an important number because look, look, look. Is that not all the skiers? Do not every, does not every skier have to go down this hill? Follow it. Do all the skiers join back together? Do they all follow here? There's my total current. See it? Total current, Dylan, is 5 amps. Now I can go back and fill in some blanks. Oh, and if I had 2 amps right here and 0.5 amps right here, how many skiers went down this ski run, went through this resistor? 2.5. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Which way is the current flowing in this 2 amp current, up or down? Down. How many amps must be in this resistor then? Three, also down, and they join together at the bottom of the ski lift. Bottom of the chair. See, the ski hill analogy actually worked really well. I used to do this all with systems of equations. We would call this I1, we would call this I2, we would write a system. It was nice, but it was way more complicated. First thing I try and find always, if I can, is the total current. Has this diagram told me the total current anywhere? What's the total current? 4.5. So there's my reference point. And it looks like it's flowing this way. Looks like it's flowing this way. How many amps are in this particular junction? 3.5. Because I got one amp going down. How many amps are in this particular junction, this particular resistor right here? 3.5. How many amps are at the bottom right here? 3.5. How many amps are right here? One amp. How many amps are right here? Back to 4.5 amps. So as long as they give you a little bit of information, you can hopscotch your way to filling out the rest. The nicest to find, you can see it falls apart. As soon as you know total current, it really falls apart. And so I almost always bend my efforts to, I'd like to find total current. That's Kirchhoff's law for current. It says that current in equals current out. How do we decide how much current goes where? Well. The amount of flow along a particular path depends upon the resistance. How many amps is there in this particular circuit grand total? Six. If each resistor is identical, the current will split exactly in half. Because you can think of it as identical ski hills. Hey, you guys go that way, we'll go this way, we'll meet up at the bottom, but it's the same hill. So how many amps are flowing through this resistor? Three amps. How many amps are flowing through this resistor? Three amps. If one path has more resistance, what can we say about the splitting of current? So here's our diagram. We have a small resistance and a big resistance more skiers can fit through the small resistance hill because it's a wider hill. That's going to be our analogy. There's not as much resistance. We can get more skiers on it. Wider hill, lower resistance. We'll have a bigger current. We would say this. I1 is going to be bigger than I2. <coughs> bigger resistor, smaller current. Smaller resistor, bigger current, which kind of makes sense. Smaller resistor, yeah, and pack more skiers through. In fact, we can even do more than that, Dylan. If the resistors are simple ratios of each other, we can relate the currents via the same ratios. For example, here it says that the second resistor is twice as big as this one. Smaller resistor will have more current, but the ratios will be the same but opposite. It would be 4 amps 
and 2 amps. It'll be a 2 to 1 ratio, but the opposite ratios of the resistors. What if, this had, what if this had been 3R? It would be a 3 to 1 ratio. I have to do a bit of math to figure out what that would look like, but okay. But 2 to 1 worked nice. In fact, we can do even more than that. Kirchhoff's voltage law, which the author abbreviates KVL, it's basically a conservation of energy because we did say that voltage was energy per coulomb. It says this, as charges flow around the circuit, they experience voltage gains in the battery. The chairlift lifts them higher. Remember we said voltage like your height? And they lose voltage across the resistors. They go downhill through the resistors. For every path through the circuit, the voltage gains equal the voltage losses. Huh? The sum of all the voltage gains equals the sum of all the voltage losses. <clears throat> this looks confusing, but when I bring in our ski hill analogy, you'll go, oh yeah, that just makes sense. Here's what it says. If the chairlift takes you to the top of the mountain and you've gained six volts, you have to lose all six volts to get to the bottom of the mountain. You can't somehow lose four volts and end up at the bottom of the mountain. You couldn't be at the bottom of the mountain because volts is like your height. You have to go through another two volt loss to get to the bottom of the mountain. It's much easier to see in the circuit. So here's our chairlift, here's our battery. What voltage gain do the skiers have when they leave the chairlift? How many volts? 20 volts. Before they hit this ski hill, how high are they? Still 20 volts. But they lose 8 volts going through this resistor. So once they get to the bottom of this first ski hill, what would the voltage in this circuit be if we measured it right there? How high are they now? 12. Because they've lost 8 volts going through the resistor. They've gone down an 8 volt high ski hill. So now they have 12 volts left to spend. What does this drop have to be? Well, if this is my last ski hill, how high am I at the bottom of the chairlift? Always zero. So how many volts must I have lost going through this resistor? Must have lost 12 volts going through the resistor. And at the bottom of the resistor, Megan, I'll be at zero volts now because I've gone through all the ski hills. Start out 20 volts high, lose eight, lose 12. In fact, what we say is, if you walk a ski run, which means you get back to where you started from, the change in voltage is zero. Start out with 20, lose 12, lose 8, gain 20, back here, you're back to where you started from. That's what Kirchhoff's voltage law says. It says on a mountain, if you end up back to where you started from, you have to be at the same height as you were five minutes, like where you started. Evan, how many volts is this battery giving us? 10. So what's the voltage right here? 10. We haven't lost anything yet. Let's go down. Now there's two possible ski hills we can travel down. The skiers have options. So the first path we're going to take, Evan, is this one. This is our first ski run of the day. We're 10 volts high. How high are we still before we hit the hill? 10 volts high. Now, how much do I lose? Well, I notice, Evan, that I can go down this one hill and end up at the bottom of the chairlift. So how much must I lose going through this particular resistor? 10 volts. How many volts do I have right here? Zero. There is a second possible path, Brendan, that I can take. I could have gone through this ski run here. So when I get to the top of this ski run, Brendan, how many volts do I have? 10. Can I lose and end up back at the bottom of the chairlift going through this one hill here? Then I must lose all my voltage. How many volts do I lose? 10. And that gets me to zero. 
In fact, both of these resistors would have a 10 voltage drop. <coughs> Terminology. We say these two resistors are in series. We say these two resistors are in parallel. We'll be talking about that next class, but there's a good example. Somebody have a question? I thought I heard somebody say something. No? Okay. Example five. What's going here? 12. I lose 8 volts. So how high are we when we get to the bottom of this particular ski hill, this particular resistor? How many volts do we have left to play with? 4. So how high am I at the top of this hill? 4 volts. If I go down this ski run, does that get me to the bottom of the chairlift? Then I must lose 4 volts going through that resistor. How high am I right here? How many volts do I have right here? Four. Dylan, can I lose all of my height and get back to the bottom of the chairlift going through this ski hill? Then I must lose four volts to get to zero volts. Let's do a more complicated one with multiple resistors. 60 volt battery, big battery. Megan, when I leave the chairlift, what's my voltage right there? 60? Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Megan, I lose 15 volts through here. It looks like every skier has to go through this ski hill. However, this mountain is set up. Everyone goes down this hill. So how many volts do I have right here? Okay, let's walk this ski run together, first of all. Then we'll walk the outside ski run together. So right here I have 45. How high is this particular hill? It's 18. So what must I have left here? 37? 27? Sorry, I didn't hear you. 27 volts. And as I keep going, now I don't know what this voltage drop is, but I do notice I ended up at the chairlift, which is at the zero at the bottom. So how many volts must this voltage drop be? It must be a 27 volt drop. I must have 27 coming in and lose my final height there. Let's walk through the outside path now. So we already filled in the 60. In fact, uh, what's my voltage right here? What am I going into this particular ski run with? 45, I lose 10, 35, Gordon, what? How did you figure out the 8? It doesn't say, oh, I know I have to be 27 volts high when I get here still. So I can only lose 8 volts to get to 27 volts high because the skiers have to be able to join together on the same height. This is where Kirchhoff's voltage, voltage law really shines. Note, there are two useful conclusions to draw from Kirchhoff's current law. For any complete loop around the circuit, actually this is not from Kirchhoff's current law, this is from Kirchhoff's voltage law. For any complete loop around the circuit, the voltage drops equal the voltage gains, and no matter which way you go between two points, the drop must be the same. In other words, whether I go from here to here or from here to here, if I'm starting here and ending here, if I lose 18 going through here, see the other way I could have done it, Gord, is I could have said I have to lose 18 going through here. If that's 10, that better be 8 so I can lose 18 going through here. I could have looked at the end result or I could have looked at the corresponding ski hill. Doesn't matter. Same answer no matter what. Very nice. And believe it or not, that's all we're going to be using for the next three or four lessons. We're going to be doing more and more complicated circuits and more and more accurate circuits, but we're going to be using Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law V equals I times R. Yes? Uh, are we ever going to work with resistance and wires? No. Sadly. Uh, that's a fib. Almost no. Sorry. The author says, 
to see the voltage relationships, it's sometimes helpful at first to redraw the circuit so that all the resistors are pointing downhill. In other words, he might take this and make it look more like a ski hill. Everyone goes down this hill, and then we split up with our friends and we go down here. I'm going to choose not to do that. I want you to get used to the regular schematic diagrams. And also because I really suck at drawing these. Sorry. So it says 5B can be redrawn as follows. I guess. Example 6 says write equations. We're going to jump to actually solving some of these. Suppose we have a 30 volt battery and we have two equal resistors along a path. If the resistors are the same, what do you think would make sense about the voltage drops? Pardon me? Prove it. Here's how we're going to prove it. Now we're going to start to combine everything. I know that voltage equals I times R. Remember that one, Ohm's law? This is the total current leaving right here. I'll just label it total current. What can you tell me about the current here and the current here? Are they the same or are they different? The current has to be the same because Kirchhoff's current law says that current going in has to equal current going out. There's no other junctions. So what I would say is for each of these, they both have the same current as well. You see how we're going to do our proof, Dylan? If they have the same resistor, which the question told us, and they have the same current, which I know from Kirchhoff's law, and if V equals I times R, then both of these have the same I times R. Therefore, V equals 15 in each. Now, uh, I agree with you, Dylan. If they're the same, I would have just said it's half and half, 15 and 15. But if it's more complicated, I can go with this and actually calculate it. This would be V equals I times R. This would be V equals I times R. That's going to give you a hint for this next one. If the resistances are not the same, what can we say about the division of voltage? So if we have a big resistance and a small resistance, now they'd still have the same current because they're still part of the same junction. So you would have this, V1 equals I big R, V2 equals I little r. Which one's going to have a bigger voltage? V1 is going to be bigger than V2. So bigger resistance means a bigger voltage in that resistor, a larger voltage drop. And if the resistors are simple ratios of each other, we can relate the voltage drops via the same ratios. For instance, find the unknown voltage drops below if <coughs> excuse me. If this one is twice as big as this one, this voltage will be twice as big as this voltage. Twenty and ten. Put everything together, assuming my voice holds up. Um, at first, although I labeled the voltages all over the place, your diagram gets cluttered. So from now on, Connor, I'm going to be labeling only my batteries and my resistances. I'm going to label voltage gains and voltage drops. Otherwise, the diagram gets really, really cluttered. So example eight says, Find the unknown voltage drops, currents, and resistances, remembering that V equals I times R. Okay. Let's see. The first thing I would do is I would glance at my diagram and I would say, 
do I know the total current anywhere? Have they told me the total current anywhere? And I think in this diagram, I think they have. <coughs> current, 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 total current. Four. The reason is all the skiers have to go through here. So I'm going to try and see if I can label some currents along the way. What can I label here? Well, if that's three amps, how many amps must this be? One amp. Oh, and how many amps must this be? Sally. I thought you said it. No? Four. Yeah, so I didn't hear you. Because it's total current back again. Okay. Um, let's see what we can do with voltages. How many volts do we lose here? Starting with 18, we lose 6. How many are left? So if I walk through this ski hill, can I go down this ski hill and get to the bottom? How many volts must I lose here? Sally, 12. Do I know the current here? Yeah. Do I know the voltage here? Yeah. Good. What's the resistance? Uh, let's see. R equals V over I from I. V equals I times R. What's the resistor? 4 ohms. Right? The rule is as soon as you know two things, you automatically know the third one because of Ohm's law. So if you know two quantities inside a resistor, you know the third one always. Uh, uh, oh, how many volts must I lose here? 12? Oh, and by the way, what's the resistance in this particular resistor? 12 ohms. Oh, what's the resistance in this particular resistor? V divided by I, 6 divided by 4. Uh, this has uh, a resistance of 1.5 ohms. Any resistor where I know 2, I know 3. B. I said again, I always try and find total current first. Have they told me the total current in circuit B? Not blatantly. It's not labeled. However, I think I can make an educated guess because I can figure out what the current is right there when everyone joins together. What's the current right here when everyone joins together? You see it? What? 2.5. That's my total current here then. 2.5. Oh, by the way, what's the resistance there? going to be a decimal. Eight point four even. Okay. Um, if I walk through this particular ski run to get to the bottom of the chairlift, how many volts had I better lose here? Well, I'm starting with thirty five. I lose 21. What's left? Uh, 14. You know what? This has got to be 14 volts. Oh, and uh, for what it's worth, what's the resistance of that particular resistor? 14 ohms. How many volts do I have to lose going through this ski hill? Also 14. Oh, and how big is that resistor? 9.33? I can't give you a standard approach to solving all of these. All I can say, Jordan, is try and find total current first. And once you have that, it does usually fall apart. But as they get more and more complicated, we're going to have to kind of get a few other approaches as well. Let's see here. Um, <coughs> Did they tell me the total current anywhere in this question? Hmm. Not blatantly. 
So now I start to fill in what I can, but I'm always keeping in mind, as soon as I know two things, how many do I really know? Three. And in particular, I'm going to be saying, hey, it'd be nice if I can find a current somewhere along the way, because the more currents I can find, the more likely it is I can get the total current. So, um, well, starting here, how high are we? 40 volts? I don't know what that is, but I lose 35, and I can get to ground level. Oh, I do know what this is. How many volts must this be as a voltage drop? Got to be 5 volts. Yay. Oh, how many volts must this one be as a voltage drop? 35? And now I smile because do I know 2? I know 3. Uh, v equals I times R, I equals V over R. Yes, if I get the I by itself. What's the current here? 7 amps. Why does that help me? Well, I got 1 amp here. I got 7 amps here. Ah! What's my total current when they join together? So what's my current up here? Because total current's going through it. If I know 2, I know 3. Uh, resistance is, what did I say, voltage divided by current. So 5 divided by 8 uh, point, sorry, 0. 0.625 ohms. And this one I could have got actually right away. Uh, voltage divided by current. This has a resistor of 35 ohms. Kirchhoff's laws. Very handy. This is so much fun. Let's do a few more. Okay. D. Hmm. Oh! I know total current. That probably is going to help this question fall apart somewhat. Hey. I know two. You know what I really know? Three. What's the current in this particular resistor? Uh, current is V over R, uh, 3 amps. And this is why I said if they give you total current, the question really falls apart. I know my total current is 5. If that's 3, what's the current over here? 2. Oh, 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 and one more thing. Look up for a second, folks. So here's our skiers right here. They split up. Some go down here, some go down here. Do they meet up again down here? Then they must have gone through the same height. How high does this resistor have to be? Sorry, yeah, how, how many volts does this resistor have to have? It's got to be 15 volt drop, right? Otherwise, the skiers couldn't shake hands, leave, and shake hands, meet up. Do I know two? I know three. What's the resistor here? 7.5 ohms. Oh, I know the current down here. What's the current down here? 5 amps. How can I figure out the voltage? Oh, V equals I times R. What's the voltage drop here? Not 40, I don't think. V equals I times R. It's got to be 20. Right? I know, I know 2, I know 3. Ah, but Gord, if I start out with 70 and I lose 15 and I lose 20, what must I lose here if I'm able to get back to the ground? Justin, 35. Justin, do I know 2? Then I know 3. What's the resistance up here? 7. So you hopscotch your way around, filling in what you can along the way. Your main goal, though, your rule of thumb is try and find the total current first, because if you find that, it really does fall apart. Were there other orders that we probably could have done this in? Probably, but we got the same answer no matter what. I just try and go kind of systematically. And generally, whenever I know two, I write the third one down just because. It's easy enough to quickly do on my calculator. E.
Okay. Um, in my diagram, this line got moved a bit. This line should really be right there for the battery, but somehow it got moved partway into the resistor. Sorry, the diagrams are getting old. But use your imagination. So this time, the current is running this way. You know what? I'll just do the arrows like that just to make sure, because we've been going in the opposite direction up until now. I don't want to make a sloppy mistake. It's going from positive to negative. Okay. Did they tell me the total current anywhere? Yes. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. You see it, Connor? If I know two, I know three. What's the current in this particular resistor? Four amps, and conveniently, that happens to be the total current. Right? Okay. Um, well, how high is the chairlift? 32. How much do I lose going down this first ski run? 8. So how high am I now? 24. Can I get to the ground going through this ski run right here? How many volts must I lose going through here? 24. Do I know two? I know three. What's the current here? 2.4 amps. Ah! What was the total current? Four. How much went here? 2.4. What's the current in both of these resistors? 1.6, 1.6. And I know it's the same for both because there's no junctions for the skiers to leave. Kirchhoff's law. Oh, and they told me this one was 10 volts. By the way, if this one is 10 volts, how many volts must this be? Got to be 14 because this hill is 24 high. These two hills combined better be 24 high. So 14 volts. Oh, do I know two? I know three. Do I know two? I know three. What's the top resistance? 6.25? What's the bottom resistance? 8.75? Is he right? I should ask. Yes? Okay. One of the ways they love to test your understanding is they love to give you light bulb questions. Now, light bulb questions involve brightness. And the brightness of a light bulb is related to its power use which depends on power equals V times I. If these were all light bulbs, can you go V times I on that one for me, please? How many watts is that bulb? 100? How many watts is this bulb? How many watts is this bulb? 32, right? V times I. How many watts is this bulb? V times I? 7.6. How many watts is this bulb? 16. How many watts is this bulb? So here would be a nice question. Which is the brightest bulb? That one. Which is the weakest bulb? The dimmest bulb? Uh, this one, I think, yeah? No? Uh, this one? Brightest one is, I can't hear you. Brightest one's not on your diagram? Oh, that's not in, no wonder I'm confusing you guys. That's not a bulb there. So which is the brightest bulb? I think this one then, yeah? Who's the brightest bulb in the drawer? Apparently not Mr. Duick. Shut up. Okay. Okay. So when they're asking you which bulb is brighter, what they're saying is which one has a bigger VI? So it says this. The two bulbs below are identical. They have the same resistance. So I'm going to say R, R. By the way, how many volts must this bulb be taking? What's the voltage drop? 10 volts. What's the voltage drop here? Also 10 volts. If the resistances are identical and the voltages are identical, what can you tell me about the currents? So 
So what can you tell me about their brightness if they have the same voltage and the same current? Same, since both have same VI, same power. Two bulbs wired in parallel will have identical brightnesses if they're identical bulbs. What about these two, which are wired in series? So the two bulbs are identical. Same R, same R. What can you tell me about their currents? Oh, identical for both because they're both part of the same junction. If the I and the R are the same, what can you tell me about their voltages? So what can you tell me about their brightness? By the way, what is the voltage if they're the same in each of these bulbs? So they would have the same brightness since they have the same VI. Um, if all four of these bulbs in these two examples were identical, which bulbs would be brighter, the bulbs in the first circuit or the bulbs in the second circuit? First would be brighter? Convince me. Okay. Kirchhoff's laws. What's your homework? I'm going to give you a bunch of these. You get good, they go fast, but this is the fundamental stuff of this unit. So, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, one, two, three, four, five. Six is good, seven is good. Eight is good, nine is good. Yep, ten. Eleven. Nope. Um. Oh yeah, twelve falls apart really easy. These go pretty fast. So, so far everything. Uh, am I going to assign? Yeah, 13 is a nice one to think about. They gave you a hint. Holy smokes, am I going to assign every question? Let's find out. What can be said about... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 14 is good. I'll pause there. I won't worry about 15 or 16. They go pretty quick. Mr. Duck, how do we show work on these? And the answer is you sort of don't. The way you show work, the way I mark these, is I look for stuff to be labeled. So if you do do a V equals I times R on a test to find something, or an I equals V over R, or an R equals V over I, show, write that somewhere so that I know you did that step. But otherwise, I look to see your circuits are labeled. 